So this is my first conference. I mean, first time I'm attending this conference, and I'm loving it. So, so as you many of you know, at Enterprise DB, we have been working on a new storage access method called uh, Zheap, which uh, provides a better control over bloat. So in Zheap, typically we try to perform in-place updates and put the older version of the tuple in the undo log. And uh, for any kind of storage access method, the ability to have the concurrency control is important. So for that, tuple locking is the way to implement the concurrency control. And uh, this talk is about how we have implemented tuple locking in Zheap. And the uh, good news is we haven't used multi-sec machinery. So the basic uh, thing first. So why do we, do we need tuple locking? So that two different transactions can't update the same tuple at the same time. And this guarantee must persist till the end of the transaction. So in uh, PG, there are uh, four different uh, tuple locking modes. Uh, the first is for update, which is equivalent of taking the exclusive lock on the tuple so that no other concurrent operation, ca concurrent transaction can modify the same tuple. Then uh, we have for no key update, which actually is equivalent of taking an exclusive lock on non-key attributes, right? So and there, then we have for share uh, uh, tuple locking mode, which is uh, equivalent of taking a share lock on the tuple so that it cannot be updated by other transactions. And then finally, we have for key share, which uh, takes the share lock on only the key. So if some other transaction wants to update no, no key attribute, non-key attribute, attributes, so it can do so. So this is the uh, compatibility matrix uh, among different uh, tuple lock modes, which you guys already know, so I'll skip this. So now I'm going to briefly talk about how it is actually implemented in Heap, right? So in Heap, whenever a new uh, transaction comes to lock a tuple, so a newly insert, on a newly inserted tuple, if some uh, transaction wants to lock that tuple, so it can just put the locking information on the tuple and uh, set the X max as uh, that transaction, right? But what, what will happen if there are more than one lockers? Because there are not enough space, so we cannot keep more than one transaction in the X max, right? So in that case, we actually use the multi sec machinery. So what we do, we create an array of all the locking XIDs along with the, uh, their lock modes, and we give a, uh, for that array entry, we actually identify it with a unsigned 32-bit integer, which is, which is called multi sec ID. And we put this multi sec ID in the X max. We also mark, mark in the info mask that the X max is actually a multi sec ID. It is not an updater transaction, it is a locker transaction, single locker transaction. It is a multi sec ID. So actually, I have uh, uh, taken reference of Alvaro's presentation for, for this uh, slide for the, to explain the heap implementation of locking tuples. So yeah, so whenever a Xmax is uh, invalid, you can just grab the lock on the tuple and set the Xmax as your own transaction. But if, if it is invalid, but if it is valid, then you have to grab the lockers list. So in case of if, it, if there are more than one locker, you have to go to PG Multisac and collect all the lockers from the PG Multisac, and you have to win, wait on it if the lock mode actually conflicts, right? So once all the transaction, all those trans conflicting transactions gets committed, then you have to start the process again. But if it does not conflict with the transaction, if the lock mode does not conflict, then if there is only a single exact then you have to combine these two transaction and create one uh, multi sec entry, right? And set that as the Xmax. And if the Xmax is already a multi sec ID, then you have to expand it by adding your current transaction in that and create a new uh, multi sec entry and set it as Xmax, right? So this is the current multi sec system that we have for Heap. And the next important thing is that, like in Heap, we always do non-in-place update, right? Whenever we update the tuple, we create a new version of that. So we always have to propagate the locker information to the new tuple. Uh, if we don't do that, then there is a problem like some other transaction can delete the new tuple 
although there is a in progress locker on that so that's wrong so in that case for that to address that problem we ha every time we lock a tuple we have to propagate all the locker information uh, we have to lock the future versions of the tuple as well and every every time we do that we need to uh, we need to emit a wall record for that right and we also have to follow this path for eval plan call so this is a pretty important part that we have now the bottlenecks of uh, the a few bottlenecks of pg multisac that i have written here so the first thing is that every time a new locker comes in pg multisac it creates a new entry new entry for that it expands the existing it takes the old locker list add it to itself and creates a new pg uh, new multisac entry for that and also since the multisac id is a 32 bit counter so there is i mean you need a efficient aging uh, mechanism to handle that i think you have seen the multisac wrap around problem warnings uh, a few times in your log i mean if you are dealing with customers so yeah so we have seen that and so in heap since the updates are non in place so you have always have to uh, lock the future uh, versions of the tuple right and whenever a new multisec is created a new wall record has to be emitted has to be inserted and sometimes this multisec to clean up multisec sometimes uh, uh, pull table vacuum is triggered to clean old multisec ids right and the list goes on i mean i am not going to talk about all the uh, problems of maintaining multisec but these are the few things i wanted to point about so yeah so before going into detail tuple locking design for zheap i want to give a background of uh, how what the zheap page looks like and the what the tuple format is so so in z each zheap page it looks uh, it's each zheap page has a fixed set of slot and in in the slot we keep the 64 bit transaction id and a 8 byte undo record pointer so every slot is of 16 bytes now the number of slots as of now th those are compile time configurable like you can while running the configure you can set uh, the transaction slots default transaction slots on the tuple but we can change it later to so that uh, you can set the uh, number of slots while creating a table we can do that as well and uh, we allow this transaction slots to be reused once the corresponding transaction gets committed or its rollback and its undo actions has been applied at that point of time you actually we allow allow to uh, reuse the transaction slot by other transactions so this allows us to operate without having too many slots in the page so this is an zheap page so does it have limited so so this is almost similar to a heap page format only the difference is at the opaque space we have different slots right which keeps the transaction information so you can see that uh, last slot is a, uh, something written tpd entry location so i'll come to that that is basically if you need more number of slots we allow we uh, allocate a different data page which we call a tpd and we allocate new slots in that page so i'll come to that uh yes and the next thing is uh this is uh, the zheap tuple format so as you can see the size of the tuple header is pretty small so we have removed all the xmin transaction related informations and cid from the cid related information from the uh zheap tuple header so we don't keep uh, it is uh, five bytes tuple header so which is pretty small compared to a heap tuple mm. and uh, we keep those transaction informations in the slot and we keep we keep a mapping from the tuple to the slot we store this in t info mask to uh, the number of attributes and transaction id so yeah so now what is tpd so why we need tpd because having a fixed set of slots in a page might create deadlocks right so different transaction may want to access the pages in different order and in order to do some operations on the tuple it has to reserve a slot 
So that may, if you have a fixed number of slots, that, that may create a deadlock, dead, deadlock scenarios. So to avoid that, we need more slots. And also, there can be multiple key share lock on the same tuple. So for that also, we need more number of slots so that they can work concurrently. So the, this TPD overflow pages, full term is temporary data pages. So this is stored in the zheap itself, along with the regular pages. So we don't maintain any other thing, pop number or something, to maintain all these TPD pages. These are interleaved pages. And uh, the idea of putting TPD in zheap is Andres. He suggested this thing. So yeah. So this is what a TPD page typically looks like. Right? So every tuple header typically points to a uh, transaction slot, but the tuple header is of fixed size. So we cannot, uh, like if we, are allow, if we extend the number of transaction slots, then it will be a problem for us for each tuple to point to a slot. Right? So what we keep for each TPD entry, we also keep the offset to slot mapping there. These are one byte for every offset to slot. We keep one byte so that uh, it maps to the slot. And each TPD entry belongs to a data page. So uh, in zheap, multiple data page can point to the same TPD page. Right? So this is what a TPD entry looks like. So initially, we create eight transaction slots. But if it needs, to, if, if it needs more transaction slot, then we expand the number of transaction slot. So next time, we create 16, and it goes like this. Uh, so the next thing is undo. So Thomas has explained quite a bit about uh, the undo mechanism. So I'll just uh, go through the points like we want for these discussions. So undo is the storage where we keep the old data. Like those, uh, I mean, like when we do in-place update, we put the older versions in the undo, right? So those undo data needs to be there for all the transaction. We cannot discard those uh, undo records for those transactions which are still in progress, right? For those transactions, for those aborted transactions which undo actions yet to be applied because we have to apply the undo actions for those records, and the committed transactions which are still not yet all visible. So this for this transaction, other transaction may have to see, uh, may have to go to undo to fetch the older version uh, of that uh, of that of some tuple. So we could definitely uh, reduce the time period that undo needs to be there by uh, actually implementing the snapshot too old. So it, we can configure some GUC parameter. And before that, if somebody wants the undo, we'll, get, we'll give the snapshot too old error. So that's one plan. And uh, we consider that uh, undo, we can, so to discard a undo, it has to be, that XID has to be smaller than the oldest XMIN. Right, so oldest X mean this is the oldest transaction ID. I mean, how do I define oldest X mean? So this is kind of horizon that before that transaction, before that uh, no in progress transaction can see its uh, can see those transaction with in progress. So before any transaction, before before uh, that old, before any transaction of oldest X mean, we can discard the corresponding undo record pointers undo records. So now uh, the interesting part, how does tuple locking work in zheap? So if we want to lock a newly inserted tuple, like the tuple is just inserted, nobody has yet modified the tuple, we store the lock mode and lock only flag on the tuple info mask. We insert an undo record pointer for that, which includes the locking information and the transaction information for the tuple. Then we store the full transaction ID and the undo record pointer in the corresponding transaction slot. And that, this is the last point is interesting. We don't set, so I'm telling you that uh, whenever uh, the latest transaction ID that modified modifies the tuple, we keep the corresponding transaction slot on the tuple. But for lockers, we don't do that, right? So for lockers, so I'll explain in this diagram. So suppose uh, 500 is the transaction which inserted this tuple, right? And it has the corresponding undo pointer. It has different slots. Uh, it has reserved a slot. And this is, uh, so now 
when a new transaction comes, suppose 501, which wants to lock the tuple. So what it does is it puts the lock only flag and key share lock. Suppose it wants to lock in key share mode. So it puts those two flag in the tuple header. It reserves the a transaction. But you can see that we, I have not, uh, we don't change the transaction slot in the tuple header. Because I'll come uh, to it later, because for visibility checks that would not block, actually needs the XI, needs to see the XID of previous inserter, latest inserter or updater. So which transaction has logged the tuple, it does not, does not care. So if the 500 transaction is visible to you, then that tuple is visible to you, right? So like for example, satisfies MVCC does not need this information, or satisfies self does not need that locker's information, but satisfies update definitely need that information and I'll come to come there. So when a tuple is modified, so this is the case when a tuple is modified, and if the lock mode does not conflict with the current lock mode, then we can just grab the lock as before. We have to just set the strongest, I mean highest uh, lock, strongest lock on the tuple, right? But, and of course, uh, like the previous way, we can insert an undo record and do the stuff. So there is no special handling for that when it does not conflict. But whenever it conflicts, we actually have to make a list of the XIDs, conflicting XIDs. So how do we do that? So this is the algorithm that we follow to make the uh, list of conflicting XIDs. So what we do, we go to each, uh, we traverse all the slots in the page, we find the in progress transaction from the page and we go to the undo chain of that and find the lock mode for the, if it conflicts with the tuple, we collect that XID. And once we made, make, once we, uh, this XID list is available, then we sleep on it, right? So once all those transaction gets committed and we restart the process, right? And if the list is empty, we just go and take the lock. In this case, we set our lock. We clear all the old lock modes, and we set our lock, whatever the current lock mode we set. So, so far, any doubts? Like, yes. Okay, um, I just uh, trying to understand. Um, so, if you see you have several per page or maybe an overflow, what um, what's the relationship between the PC and the and the tuples on that page? No, uh, so uh, whenever we allocate a TPD page for a uh, for a ZHe page, we basically keep a pointer to the which actually points to that TPD page and the offset, the TPD entry, right? And that TPD entry actually have the offset to slot uh, mapping. So these offsets are same offset of the page. So if the page has hundred offsets, hundred tuples, so those are hundred offsets. And each of them, those are one byte. Each of them points to which slots. So that, so if some transaction has modified the tuple and it grabs the TPD, modified some tuple, and it grabs a TPD location, grabs a TPD slot, then that offset will be marked with the that slot number. Okay, so here you're using offset and line interchangeably. Off, by offset, you just mean the line pointer. Ah, uh, yes, line pointer. Okay. So. Um, TPD slot is same uh, transaction, pool transaction ID and under record pointer. Okay. Right? So. So uh, now the same thing for, for following the update chain. So in Zheap actually we support in place update and we find the undo records using the CT ID, right? So, to follow the update chain, we don't need to emit separate wall rec separate uh, undo records. We don't have to uh, log the future versions uh, of uh, the tuple. It is automatically locked because we are doing in-place updates, and we find the undo record, find the undo, uh, find the undo records using the CT ID, right? So we don't have to do that if since we have in-place updates, and for our most of the cases are in-place updates, and it reduces the write amplifications, right? But if the tuple is not in place update like heap, we have to lock all the future versions. So this is again we use for the eval plan call path. Uh, 
now the visibility thing that uh, so for the visibility purpose actually we don't need to retrieve the lockers for the cases that wouldn't block right if you if if you if like for example heap satisfies mvcc so you just want to see whether the tuple is visible or not right for that case you don't need the lockers transaction information you just need the latest inserter updater delete whatever the transaction is so those information you don't need the lockers information in that case right so otherwise we have to traverse the undo chain to collect the lockers as i have mentioned previously now we also keep a multi locker flag on the tuple to indicate whether the tuple has multiple lockers or a single locker so for a single locker case we can stop traversing undo chain as soon as we get one in progress transaction that lock the tuple that lock the tuple but for multi locker case we have to traverse all the undo chains so how does the rollback work so if the tuple has only a single locker only a one lock, single locker then we of course have to clear the uh, transaction slot so that it can be reused further we also reset the lock mode because this is the single locker there are no uh, simultaneous multi concurrent lockers so we can just reset the uh, tuple lock tuple mode and finally as i have mentioned we always keep the previous inserter updaters slot as it is so because for locking a tuple we don't change the slot on the tuple and if the tuple has multiple lockers this in this case also we clear the transaction slot corresponding to the aborted transaction but we don't apply any rollback operations on the tuple because we don't know which lock mode to set right because there can be multiple key share locks so we cannot just clear the key share lock mode so for any subsequent operations that wants to lock a tuple that it again sets the lock mode of the uh, in progress transaction so it automatically gets cleared okay now uh, for the wall record to lock a tuple we have to emit a wall record yes. question so uh, to lock a tuple we emit a single wall record so that uh, uh, we, we and we we provide enough information so that we can generate the undo records uh, and the standby or during recovery we also emit a wall record we have to emit a wall record while applying the rollback actions as well so what are the advantages so we don't need the 32 bit multisect id in the system so there are no wrap around issues uh, in this and so undo records corresponding to all visible lockers can be discarded by the discard worker at the background so the discard worker does not have to touch the z heap pages so once it gets old it just we just discard it so for each new locker we insert only one undo record which includes only the current lock mode it does not need to collect all the undo record all the lock modes because there can be several of them so we just insert the current lock mode so in heap uh, on the uh, like in heap we actually combine all the previous lockers in this in the newly created pg multisect entry so that's the uh, that's a difference and uh, of course we have the other advantages of not using a multisect system so this is a performance result so this is a basic performance uh, result that uh, this is not the evidence that we are always the best because uh, there can be cases where we do horribly and i'll give you an example for that so in this case what uh, we have done is we in uh, we have used a 1000 scale fiji bench with 1000 scale factor so we ha i have uh, used two scripts with 0.5 voltage uh and ran it for 15 minutes so the one is for the update pg bench accounts and another script is just select from pg bench accounts for key share so in both the cases you can see that i have also used uh, 16 slots for zhe page so that it does not go to the tpd slots right so the result is like almost comparable it's not that bad but we have to like this all this implementation is without any optimization for the performance 
So it's not right to see that we do good, something like that, because we have to invest time. This All this implementation was about to implement a system in a correct way, just so that all the regression tests pass and cover every corner cases. So you, we have to work on the performance tuning part as well. Uh, so the scope, scope, uh, few scope of uh, improvements. So while locking a tuple in exclusive mode, it is guaranteed that once you get the exclusive lock, there are no, there can be no concurrent lockers. There can be no concurrent lockers, right? So in that case, what we can do, we can actually put the slot in the tuple so that we don't have to traverse all the undo chain once it has an exclusive lock on the tuple. So this is some optimization that we can do when it has an exclusive lock. And the second thing is we write undo records for locking each tuple. So for the statements like select star from poop or share generates an undo record for each tuple. So Andres also pointed out day before yesterday for this problem. We, we have not solved this problem yet, but we have to do something about this. Because in multi-sect system, the multi-sect is actually cached. So it is not all, uh, for some cases actually, it does not create a new uh, multi-sect entry. So for, that, for some cases, it can just use the cached multi-sect. So we do not have any caching mechanism as of now. But uh, yeah, we 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 have to do, we'll, we are working in this, so we have to come up with some solution for this. Perhaps caching the undo records. I'm not sure yet, but we have to do something. And uh, the final thing is, while collecting the conflicting lockers, we need to traverse the undo chains of all in progress transactions. So here we can do something like keeping the lock modes on the page. I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, so this is one area is, which is uh, we can improve. So Amit uh, is, uh, so we've, Amit is my co colleague uh, who has worked on this, including me and Dilip, and uh, special thanks to Robert, Andres, and Thomas who have provided their inputs while designing uh, this thing. And finally, questions. Yes. No, for update, we maintain the transaction slot on the, we mark the transaction slot on the page. It is only for like, if you are taking select for update, select for key share, select for share. So for the locking transaction, and actually for select for update that I told uh, that we can actually. So it's not, so you know, so when you say you have to, Only the in progress transactions. Right, but I mean the update. So I'm saying that this is an update of a completely different case, right? So it has mm. nothing to do with the lock capture. Right. Would you have to look at it undo as well, or? Uh, so while updating a tuple, if the tuple has some conflicting locks, then we have to look into all the slots. Okay, so it's okay. So it's only one that's conflicting. Now. Only the one is conflicting yeah. locks. But if there is no conflicting locks, we just have to put our thing, the strongest locker in the lock mode, and emit one undo record. And yeah, that's it. Uh, yes, we have also thought about So we don't actually include a lot of extra information uh, while do, doing the wall logging because anyway, we do the minimal stuff that you need to wall log the lock tuple operation. So we don't keep uh, anything extra 
to generate the undo at recovery. Only we keep the undo record pointed, do, do some validation, assertion checking. So we can remove that later. We, yeah, that is. Yeah, so I think as of now, we always use uh, top transaction ID in Zheap. So um, for the sub transaction to roll back, so, uh, the point is, yeah. um, partial rollbacks. Where the flag uh, we call it as the multi locker flag. So that flag indicates that there are multiple lockers on this super lock. Uh, basically, multiple uh, super lock nodes are there. So that whenever, as Kunter told, whenever there is any conflict, if the multi locker flag is set, uh, we have to find all the lockers information. So even if the same transaction has got lock in three pair and then pair and mode, right? So we uh, if there is a conflict. Next time, time. Comes, it will see the multi locker flag, and there is no transaction which is open, it will just clear it. Sorry, yes. So whenever next transaction comes, it actually sets the correct lock mode. So either it has to clear set itself or put some. <laughs> so I think in that case, it will be there. Uh, the lock mode will still be there. The next time somebody access it, it can clear. Uh, yes, so if uh, the strongest locker gets committed and its undo got discarded, then at the, that time if some uh, lesser lock, I mean lesser transaction comes with some lesser lock, then it will actually downgrade the lock. Okay, so thank you.